Welcome to Vintage Hollywood Archive. What's not to love about actress Sally Field? The Hollywood veteran is beautiful, talented, able to make us both laugh and cry, and not afraid of aging. With two Oscars, three Emmys, and two Golden Globes, it should come as no surprise that Sally Fields is considered one of the top actors of the generation. Sally Field has been in the entertainment industry for decades, showcasing her talent to all her fans. Yet, there are still many things we don't know about her. Why Sally Field kept her horrific childhood a secret for so long. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Vintage Hollywood Archive channel. Sally Field, a lot to say. She revealed her life story for the first time. Through the years, Sally Field has made people laugh, cry, and smile, which is why her fans absolutely love her. From perky, surf-loving Gidget in 1965 to gray-haired, frumpy Mrs. Gump in 1994, Academy Award-winning actress Sally Field has exhibited a wide range of talent and an enduring likability in a profession that too often ignores women over the age of 40. If her roles have a common theme, it is that women are intelligent, strong, and capable of heroic deeds. She has an incredible acting career in television and film over the past half-century. Field played lighthearted television roles in Gidget and The Flying Nun before developing her talent at the Actors Studio, from which she emerged as a dramatic actress. After she starred in the television movie Sybil, Hollywood finally rewarded her with strong roles. In Norma Ray, she portrayed a union organizer, and for her performance, Field won an Academy Award. In 1981, she was cast as a journalist who wrongly implicates a businessman, Paul Newman, for murder in Absence of Malice. Field received her second Oscar in the Depression-era drama Places in the Heart, in which she played a mother struggling to keep her farming family intact. You like me. You really like me. A phrase that quickly entered the canon of familiar pop culture quotations. She played another strong-willed matriarch in Steel Magnolias. Field's later films included the comedies Soap Dish, Mrs. Doubtfire, Forrest Gump, and two weeks. In Steven Spielberg's Lincoln, she portrayed Mary Todd Lincoln. Despite decades of seeing the actress on screen and fangirling over her many characters, there are still things many don't know about Field. She revealed she was repeatedly sexually abused by her stepfather until she was 14 and had a secret abortion in Mexico aged 17. Whether you saw her first in Smokey and the Bandit, Gidget, Sally Field's trademark smile and undeniable grace have made her a joy to watch on the big screen and the small screen over the years. But true to her status as a bona fide Hollywood legend, Sally has also lived a life that's worthy of its own on-screen portrayal. This video reveals a behind-the-scenes look at her venerable career. Through her many award show wins, star-studded relationships, health struggles, and impassioned activism, she always inspired us to work hard and reach for the stars whether on the Hollywood Walk of Fame or otherwise. Sally Margaret Field was born on November 6, 1946 in Pasadena, California. Her mother, known by her married name, Margaret Field, was an actress who worked intermittently in theater, film, and television. Sally's father, Richard Dryden Field, was an officer in the United States Army and later a salesman. Sally's parents divorced when she was only four. Not long after, her mother married stuntman and actor Jock Mahoney. Mahoney enjoyed a measure of success in television westerns, as well as playing Tarzan in a series of films in the early 1960s. But while Sally was growing up, her parents were often unemployed. At that time, actors received no residual payments when their work was repeated on television. By her own account, Sally's stepfather was emotionally manipulative and physically abusive, for many years, she did not reveal the extent of the abuse she suffered, even to her mother. Despite this toxic situation, Sally and her brother both found the strength to achieve. Richard excelled in school and became a theoretical physicist and university professor. Sally found an outlet for self-expression in acting, starting in junior high school. 
Losing herself in another character allowed her to escape the fears and uncertainties of her home life. Before following her mother's footsteps into a career as a thespian, she wowed on the field as a high school cheerleader. After graduation from Birmingham High School in the San Fernando Valley, she enrolled in a summer acting workshop at Columbia Studios. There, a casting agent invited her to audition for a new television series. Gidget, based on a popular book and movie, was set among teenage surfers in Southern California. Field was called back to read for the role numerous times before being chosen over 75 other actresses to play the title role. At 17, she was signed to star in a primetime network television series. The role originally played by Sandra Dee in the hit movie of the same name. Gidget epitomized the typical teenager of the early 1960s, and Field was ideal for the role, establishing herself as a television star that gave young women a positive role model. Enthusiastic and slightly goofy, but always inherently obedient and moralistic. Gidget immediately established Sally Field as a popular performer in television audiences, but it also created an image of her as a fun-loving, essentially frivolous teenager that made it difficult for casting agents and directors to imagine her in more serious roles. Gidget was abruptly cancelled after its first season, but performed unexpectedly well in summer repeats, and the producers offered Field the lead in a new show, The Flying Nun, a comedy fantasy with religious overtones. Field balked at taking on such an unreal role, but lacking other offers, under pressure from the producers and her stepfather, she accepted the role. She made her feature film debut in 1967 in The Way West, but the role did not establish a lasting presence for her on the big screen. The Flying Nun ran for three seasons and enjoyed healthy ratings, but Field was growing impatient with the situation comedy format. Roles in made-for-TV movies and reoccurring parts on the Western series Elias Smith and Jones did little to expand her range. She found an artistic outlet studying at the Actors Studio, the legendary workshop founded by method acting proponent Lee Strasberg. Many of the most admired young actors of the 50s and 60s had studied with Strasberg. A demanding teacher, he enjoyed finding the hidden depths in performers whose public careers had been more limited. Under Strasberg's tutelage, Field acquired a serious reputation among her peers. She was certain she could undertake more demanding material, but there were few opportunities in Hollywood. In 1973, she found herself starring in a short-lived sitcom with another fantasy premiere, The Girl with Something Extra. The show was cancelled, and Field's marriage to her high school sweetheart ended in divorce, leaving her with two young sons to care for. She feared, with a reason, that she would be forever typecast as the cute and spunky heroine of absurd fantasies. But she made an impression on casting director Diane Crittenden, who recommended her for a role in a more realistic film. The role of Mary Tate, the receptionist in a seedy gym, was far removed from Field's relentless wholesome television image, and Raph Elson was reluctant to consider her for the part, but she eventually won him over. Before the film was released, Field won a role that was to have an even more decisive impact on her career. She finally established herself as a serious actress. With her sitcom image far behind her, Sally Field became one of the most sought-after actresses in Hollywood, playing opposite the film world's leading men. The following year brought exposure of a different kind, as she played the romantic lead in the action comedy Smokey and the Bandit, starring Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds said that Sally Field was the love of my life, sparking a whole new generation of interest in their late 1970s love story. He said he fell in love with Sally Field when she was seven. Reynolds was promoting his new film, The Last Movie Star, on Today, when anchor Hoda Kotib asked him who the love of his life was. I am not broke. You're naughty. You really are. I'm dead in the water no matter what I say, Reynolds said. Well, she was seven when I fell in love with her. She stayed seven for about 11 years. I would say Sally. Kotab asked to clarify, Sally Field? Yes, Sally Field, Reynolds said. Sally described the actor as controlling and distant. By the time we met, the weight of his stardom had become a way for Bert to control everyone around him, and from the moment I walked through the door, it was a way to control me. We were a perfect match of flaws. 
Blindly, I fell into a rut that had long ago formed in my road. A pre-programmed behavior, as if in some past, I had pledged a soul-binding commitment to this man. Although Sally said her relationship with Bert was really complicated and hurtful to her, she acknowledged that it was also not without loving and caring. She said she was initially drawn to Bert's swagger and charisma and described their connection as immediate and intense. We had known each other about three days, four days at that point, during the filming of Smokey and the Bandit. It was instantaneous, and four days felt like four years. Sally told that Bert also made her feel desirable and gave me a feeling that I was sexy and I wanted to be everything he ever wanted. But Sally said that dynamic ultimately took a terrible toll on her sense of self. What happened is that I stopped existing. I dressed for him, looked for him, walked for him. He asked me to marry him many times, but I knew his heart wasn't into it, she said. We'd have ended up just feeling terrible. With their seven-year alliance, the two became constant fodder for tabloids. However, while Field was entering her prime as an actress, Reynolds entered a period of decline and the romance ended. In Bert's final years, he seemed to have deep regrets about how he behaved toward Sally. I miss her terribly. Even now, it's hard on me. I don't know why I was so stupid. Men are like that, you know. You find the perfect person, and then you do everything you can to screw it up. Sally Field has opened up about how she was sexually abused for years as a child by her stepfather and had a secret abortion at 17. In an interview with the New York Times, ahead of the release of her memoir, In Pieces, Field said she stayed quiet about the abuse for so long because I didn't know I had a voice. Throughout the book, Field writes unflinchingly about failed relationships, dubious decisions, and missed opportunities. And she gave herself permission to write with such honesty because she wasn't sure she would ever end up publishing the book. I wrote it for myself. I didn't know whether I'd have the guts to publish it, she said. But I felt this urgency, this anxiety, this need to find something that was festering in me. I found out that I had to put all the pieces out in front of me and try to fit them together and see if I could witness something. And I don't know the answer to why I was feeling this way. She finally opened up years later when her mother, Margaret Field, was dying of cancer. Her mother, dealing with the enormity of Sally's confession of a decade-old secret, and despite her own grave prognosis, assured her daughter she would not be alone in her pain any longer. Of her stepfather, nicknamed Jocko, Sally writes in her memoir, It would have been so much easier if I'd only felt one thing, if Jocko had been nothing but cruel and frightening. But he wasn't. He could be magical, the Pied Piper with her family as his entranced followers. He would call Sally to his bedroom alone. Sally explained to her mother that it was not a one-time incident, but a series of offenses throughout her adolescence that only ceased when she turned 14 years old. I felt both a child, helpless, and not a child. Powerful. This was power, and I owned it. But I wanted to be a child. And yet. She revealed all to her mother around the time she found out she got the part in Steven Spielberg's 2012 movie Lincoln. Her mother divorced Mahoney in 1968, and he died in 1989. When she hit her late teens, she experienced a sexual awakening which she describes as breaking out of my own brain. She fell pregnant and had a secret abortion in Tijuana at 17 years old, but she would eventually find love twice in marriage. She married to Stephen Craig from 1968 to 1975. During their marriage, the couple had two sons, Peter, a novelist, born 1969, and Eli, an actor and director, born in 1972. Craig and Sally divorced in 1975, and Sally began her on-and-off relationship with Burt Reynolds. She married her second husband, Alan Griezmann, in 1984. Together, they had one son, Sam, in 1987. Field and Griezmann divorced in 1993. Sally soon landed her first big gig on TV as Gidget and then The Flying Nun, and her rise to stardom catapulted her into a different hemisphere. I was no longer a member of the club anymore, Sally writes. The human club. I was a celebrity, she added. She used acting as her therapy. Throughout her career, 
Sally Field has demonstrated versatility as an actress. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new here.